friends, welcome to day 14 of Inktober 2018. We're two weeks in, so I just want to check in and see how you're going. Is everything going fine? Have you discovered something new? Are you liking what you're doing? Are you feeling encouraged or discouraged? Uh, just let me know. I've been following a lot of people on Instagram and on Facebook, more so Instagram than Facebook, um, because I find it easier to comment on Instagram than I do on Facebook. I don't know why. I just, I feel like it, I don't know. I'm more used to Instagram, I'm just going to be honest. Uh, so I've been following a lot of people on Instagram and it has been super inspiring and encouraging and motivating for me. So I want to say a big thank you to everyone that keeps me in the loop for all of that because I, um, it is the fuel that I use when I feel a little uh, exhausted or I feel like um, maybe I don't want to try something specific. I see you guys do it. I see you have fun with it and success with it. I get stage 40 FOMO and I have to try it. And so I'm uh, blaming you for everything that happens this Inktober. <laughs> uh, but it's so good. I'm, I'm really, really loving it. And I'm still loving sharing this entire experience with you. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about the prompt for today. It is, I'm only wearing pedals today for my worldwide debut in the ballet bouquet. So Daisy is, I mean, a Daisy is a flower, but she has this petal motif, this scallop motif that we looked at in her character breakdown. So for this, I made her tutu out of petals, uh, flower petals. And it also is very reminiscent of the dress that Glinda wears in Wicked, the stage musical. So I thought that was a fun little um, accidental surprise and, uh, and definitely looks like a, a version of that. So happy accident. One of the other happy accents that I had in this was when I was drawing the curtains in. I wanted to draw some stage curtains because I thought she just looked like she was in the middle of the page dancing out of nowhere, uh, which is fine. It's a very daisy thing to do, I guess, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to add some context. So I put the curtains in and as I was drawing the lines very scratchy, um, I thought, oh, what if these weren't curtains? What if they were just vines that were made into a curtain uh, that would really tie into the floral kind of aspect of this piece? So that was a really happy accent. I'm really, really happy for that. As simple as it is, it just it really floated my boat. <laughs> it floats my boat. It did great things for me. <laughs> Uh, so let's leave it at that. I have to apologize. There's a chunk of footage missing in the middle. Um, not anything too crazy or important, but I do film on an iPhone 7 Plus. It overheated. I missed it. The reason I film on an iPhone 7 Plus is because the specs are better than my DSLR. Um, and so as far as shooting aerial footage, I think it's just a great, I don't know, just easy setup. The uh, DSLR is quite cumbersome to get over your head <laughs> and set up and, uh, and it only shoots at 30 frames per second in HD. So the, uh, my phone actually does 4k, but I should just shoot 1080p, um, HD, but it also does 60 frames per second, which just, I think makes for a nice smoother look when you're, uh, hyper speeding through everything. So that's just why I do that. It's just simple, boring. I don't even know why I'm talking about that. I have questions on uh, Facebook. I'm going to answer today. I've had a great morning. Let's just be real. I fell asleep on the couch at 9 p.m. last night. So I woke up at 6 a.m., which was scary. <laughs> uh, and so I thought, well, since I'm up, I went to the early service at church and, um, super inspiring. We've been on something that I learned about last year and it's, it's come back for a, a new season this year. And Oh, it just makes me feel so good to um, to hear it all. And it's just very reassuring, very reaffirming. So I'm in a really good mood today. Um, so let's just tackle some questions and, and see what my good mood can do for the questions. <laughs> There's nothing crazy here. I'm just, I'm just going to answer. Uh, when you decided to start a YouTube channel and your Instagram, did you notice a surge of followers, subscribers, or was it slow and steady? Do you have any advice on how to build on those platforms? Um, definitely slow and steady wins the race. It is... It's a really hard thing to look at at face value because as far as num numbers goes, uh, numbers go, I have a very conservative following. There are art channels on YouTube with over a million subscribers. Um, there are, you know, other, my peers have over 20,000 or 50,000. And it's, uh, it's something that if you look at it surface value, you start to get very discouraged by because you think, well, why aren't these people looking at my stuff or, uh, you know, what, what am I supposed to be doing wrong? Should I be doing more of this? And I think at the end of the day, you've got to look at engagement over the actual numerical value of the followers that you have. Um, the followers that you have is indicative of how many people have come across your work and decided that they wanted to see a little bit more. Now, whether they wanted to see a week's worth more or, you know, wanted to be a follower for a long time, you'll know that by looking at the engagement. So always checking in with your analytics and your numbers. Um, and and looking at your core engagement and, and that would give you a better idea of how 
uh, how things are growing for you. Not for any other reason than as far as business goes, and I'm just talking from the standpoint of a business owner here, um, there are decisions that you need to make regarding those numbers. And there are also decisions that other people will make for you about the numbers that you have. Um, so another question I got was, have you ever thought about running a mentoring program for artists looking to build their own creative business? Um, I have. It is one of the things that I thought about whilst I was running Playtest Patreon. I thought Patreon would be a great way to take a core group of people through the process of um, of some of the struggles and the triumphs I've, ha triumphs I've had running this business. But at the same time, people are going to judge whether I'm a candidate to run that based on the numbers that I have. If you're looking to grow a channel of a million subscribers, you would definitely not subscribe to my mentoring program seeing that I have 14,000. It's not going to look like the payoff is great enough for you. So um, it does, I understand why people would want more numbers for specific reasons. Um, but as far as engagement goes, then you, you get also get to make decisions as a business owner. So when I create products, I will always look at my core following of engaged followers. Um, and, and look at the conversion rates that I have from uh, following to uh, perhaps customer and an Etsy store. Um, so you look at those numbers, um, not just to see how well you're doing or if something sell, sold well, you're looking at it like before it even begins to sell because you have to place an order, right? So one of the best things I ever did was really look at the analytics <laughs> before I placed an order um, because there are certain companies that will give you really big breaks in, uh, in, in order quantity and, and you'll be able to buy thousands of units of something at 30 cents as opposed to hundreds of something for two dollars like the, the price breakdowns are really uh, great when you start ordering in bulk but at the same time I thought well would 3,000 people buy this from me and so when I looked at my engaged my following uh, that I perhaps would convert to being a customer as I was putting those orders in I knew that it would be safest and most risk-free for me to order a quantity of 100 to 200 and not 3,000 of something uh, so that I didn't just have stock overflowing in my store not being able to sell. Um, it, those are really important things to know when, you, when you're placing an order. So I think uh, as a, uh, to a manufacturer, I should have uh, clarified that. So I think as far as being a business owner goes, um, there is a value to having numbers. Um, sometimes sponsorships are only available to you with a larger following, and that is irrelevant. Uh, whether you're, they're engaged or not, it's actually just the number that a company is looking out for. Um, a lot of marketing teams from companies will use um, people with big followings because of the influence they have over those followings. Uh, whether the influence is good or bad too, it's just the nature of marketing and having a large audience to sell to. Sometimes I see it as uh, the Super Bowl. Uh, if you're putting an ad on at the Super Bowl, Super Bowl you know that uh, you know each year a certain amount of million people watch the Super Bowl, so the ad costs a certain amount of money. Uh, the same thing goes for a YouTube a YouTuber who might have seven million people subscribe to them and an average view count of a million people watching their videos. Uh, you know, that's when a company will reach out to you with the same marketing uh, dollars that you would possibly get for a uh, for a, a Super Bowl commercial because the reach is still the same. At the end of the day, that company wants to provide their product to the eyes of a million people. So. In this world of modern uh, social media, we get to direct that for ourselves and we get to open ourselves up to these opportunities. It's a really hard thing to navigate as the algorithms change. So I'll just say what every person in business would probably uh, say <laughs> and has said to me a million times, just be open to change and be adaptable. That will always uh, kind of work out for you. Um, but advice on growing, it really is about engagement and the uh, the engagement that you're putting forth as well. So uh, it's it's really nice to think that a lot of people would just want to engage with us because, um, you know, we might be nice people or we think we're doing good things. Uh, but a lot of the time they might just not even know we exist or um, maybe want to be engaged with as well. They want that two way street kind of a communication. Uh, so I would suggest that if you wanted to build on that number and to build on the engagement and the following to uh, really network 
network yourself. Really uh, put comments out there, put likes out there on Instagram, uh, comment on YouTube videos, subscribe to a bunch of channels that you actually like to watch. I don't want you to do anything uh, that is too boring for you. Um, but really engage with the content that, that speaks to you or that you feel like you fit the market of. Uh, because there, as a consumer, like as, as someone that just loves to watch YouTube as well, I'm always looking for a new studio vlog to watch. I'm always looking for a new speed paint to watch. Um, I'm always looking for, for new content to watch and I don't really care who gives it to me at the end of the day. I just want to watch it. <laughs> um, so there's room at the table for absolutely everyone. Don't, uh, don't, don't ever feel like there's not space for you. Even in a saturated market, there is something that you bring that is very different. Um, even if it looks the same, the story behind it is different because the person behind it is different. That creative voice that you have is something that someone else is really going to want to hear. So um, I would encourage you just to engage in all of that. There's nothing wrong with uh, share sharing a, a platform with someone, with sharing a following with someone. Um, my biggest surge in followers actually came from uh, Ali Brown had given me a shout out in one of her videos and uh, Ali and I have a lot in common we're both Christians we both share a faith and I feel like that's something that we can connect with a lot of our followers on I think we uh, we both love to experiment with art styles and art mediums so that's something that's very similar as well that uh, kind of uh, creative process and we both love to art journal and, and really get our feelings out and heal through lots of things um, and, and also just document a lot of things that we enjoy through this creative pursuit so we essentially do the same thing but Ali and I are very different people and so the audience that we share uh, gets something from Ali that I could never give and they get something from me now that uh, that Ali had introduced them to and uh, and that they were so gracious enough to keep following for so I, I, I think there is such a great thing to sharing in that as well with someone obviously another good thing to do might be to uh, get onto a design team if you can um, really uh, put your work in with that one as well. I will just admit some of the th reason I think uh, I did get chosen for that first design team was that I went way back through um, the uh, the back catalog of content that I saw that was um, that you know that essentially created the brand that was about to be launched, and so. Um, I really like directed that application with uh, you know my own personal aesthetic, of course, but with subject matter that was very relevant to the brand. Um, that's a whole nother thing, I guess. I could talk about something completely separate. Um, but as far as you know, interacting with other accounts, I think that is something that will definitely bring about some some new following for you, some new audience. I know this because <laughs> it's so stupid. But my search feature on Instagram got flooded with Beyonce posts. Now, I don't search for Beyonce, have nothing against her, love her, but I, it's, I'm just not a huge, like, Beyonce buff. I don't search for her songs, I don't listen to her on a regular basis, I, uh, you know, I jam out to it whenever it's on, but it's not really something I, I seek out. Stella, my good girl Stella, went on a Beyonce binge, and because Stella and I are so connected on Instagram, the algorithms see that Stella and I are friends and that we engage with each other's content a lot. So it thinks, well, um, you know, we are friends, but Instagram also thinks we're friends. And so if, if she likes that, then he must like that, or he might like that. So let me show him that. So Instagram just flooded my feed with Beyonce posts. <laughs> I had told Stella about this. It was a while ago. I said, I don't know why, but there's so many Beyonce things popping up. And she goes, oh, I was on a mad binge the other night. And, um, and so they just popped up all through my Instagram feed. So the algorithms really work to um, bring you to other people, but also bring other people to you. So there might also be other artists out there that you have never discovered before. Um, and, and this would also bring them to you as well. I, on YouTube, I get these recommended videos all the time. And now YouTube is starting to recommend videos based on what audiences are watching. So I've even popped up on there and it said, James Burke viewers like to watch this. Do you want to watch this? And I thought, they do? <laughs> do they really like to watch this? Okay, I'll watch it. If, if everyone else is watching it, I'll watch it. Um, and it's recommended me, you know, other, it will say like, Ali Brown viewers like to watch this. Would you like to watch this? And so the recommended feature is amazing. It actually uh, opened me up to catnip illustrations. Um, and I was watching her videos. I loved watching her studio vlogs and watching her create things. Her style in, uh, in those vlogs and all her drawings is what inspired me for Little Raven Inktober amongst a, a, bit, a bunch of other artists. Um, and then I saw her got featured
word on the Creator on the Rise for, for YouTube. They have this program where they feature creators for 24 hours um, and, and bring them YouTube's following and her account just skyrocketed. So uh, I think also another great way to get noticed is an accidental shout out or, <laughs> or uh, getting featured. But a lot of the time, I mean, the slow, steady hustle and grind is really about engaging and uh, keeping that two-way communication open with the following that uh, you would possibly like to have. So that'll be my advice for that. Hope it was helpful. If not, hope you just enjoyed the piece. I'll be back tomorrow for another one. Bye.